Welcome to day three. If you missed the first two days, no worries. We have that uh, prepared for you both on YouTube and on the I Am Community Facebook group, so uh, you can check that out after the session. Um, so they sh both should be up there. Um, but today we've got a lot of a lot of interesting stuff for you guys to uh, to do a lot of playing today, um, which will be fun. So I hope you're ready. And for those of you who bought who brought your uh, favourite etude, that will be put into good use a little later in the session. Great. Okay. Yeah. How are we looking? Good, good. Everyone's saying hi and looks like everyone's awake. Everyone's awake. That's, <laughs> that's very good. Some very exotic places that people are calling in from, which has been kind of cool during this pandemic to connect with people all over the world. So, Three. great. Sammy, is everything good on Facebook Live? Uh, let me double check. Okay, but go ahead, Andrew. I think we can. Okay. Great. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back uh, to our five-day peak performance challenge. If you are here for the first time, welcome. Great to see you. And please uh, let us know in the chat where you're coming from, uh, particularly if you're here for the first time. Uh, so we're going to get going with this. So there's our there's our beautiful cover page. That Ripple presented. Uh, I'm Andrew, uh, Andrew Bain. I am the principal one of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Uh, there are a few of the jobs that, that I've sort of been lucky enough to, to have over the years. Uh, I uh, obviously grew up in Australia, uh, moved to, to, actually moved to Vienna uh, in my mid 20s, studied there for a little bit, had a job in the Münchner Symphonica in Munich for a couple of years, moved back to Australia, played in the opera. Uh, at the Sydney Opera House for two seasons uh, and then was very fortunate in 2011 to win the position in the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Uh, I also teach at the Colburn School uh, and the middle of last year at the beginning of the pandemic uh, Rupal and I founded uh, Invest a Musician which is a program uh, designed to help uh, help musicians to basically just to increase their, uh, their ability on their instrument, uh, their ability in planning their career uh, and, uh, and all of the aspects that, uh, that are around that. It's a dream that we had for, for about 10 years and one of, the, one of the few good things that came out of the pandemic was that it gave us the opportunity to, um, to start this, uh, this organisation. So uh, we're excited to, to bring this to you. This is one of our many community events that we do and uh, we are in the middle of it today. We're going to do a lot of work on uh, extending our skill set today and, and applying it to... Uh, to more realistic uh, situations. And this is our team for uh, the Peak Performance Workshop. Rupal Bain is uh, co-founder of Investor Musician and is our business coach uh, in, the, in the spring and fall and summer programs. Uh, she also uh, is the expert that put all these slides together, except for, the, except for when I write the word favorite, in, in which case uh, that's all on me. Um, and I have it on good authority that actually I did spell it correctly. It was just uh, I'm in the wrong country. So, <laughs> so you know, fair enough. Uh, but also with us, uh, Sammy Lee, who is our uh, marketing manager. And then we have uh, Valerie, Ankeny, Elizabeth and Laris, and Dana Rickard, who are working uh, with us, doing a fantastic job, um, making sure everything runs smoothly in these programs. Uh, so we have uh, we have about 400, well actually over 400 people who have uh, registered for for the peak performance uh, challenge, and uh, that requires us to do a lot of a lot of sort of wrangling and, and organising. But uh, these guys have done an amazing job of of making it run really smoothly. If you have any questions at any time, please put them in the chat. Uh, Valerie, Dana, and uh, and Ellie are uh, monitoring the chat, and and they're going to help out with that. Invested Musician, uh, as I said, is our, is our uh, organization and uh, we're here to revolutionize your playing, accelerate your career and build financial stability as a musician. Uh, please check out the website www.investormusician.com. We also have a YouTube page and there's a special announcement at the end of this session for, for YouTube. 
Uh, and you guys will also be familiar with uh, the Investor mu Musician uh, community on uh, Facebook. So a lot of cool things. Ripple, do you have anything to add? No. Okay. Just for people who are new, sorry, we're doing the same thing every day. But, yep, you get to know us well. Uh, so just a quick recap on... Uh, on the first two days. So if you're just joining us this morning, or even if you've been here for the three days, I think it's it's really good for us to just sort of uh, keep reinforcing these, these layers uh, that we're talking about. So the first day we talked about the foundation, and that's basically my philosophy of how I'm constructing my playing. And I think this is a really important thing for us to think about and make sure that all of the, all of the new information that we're getting from YouTube, from teachers, from concerts, from you know, all sorts of uh, backgrounds that we're fitting it into a, a philosophy uh, to help our own playing. So for me, the foundation is simple, natural, and repeatable. If whatever I'm doing is not simple, natural, and repeatable, I'm going to move it to one side and deal with it either never or at another time. But we want to figure out, oh, is what I'm doing fitting into that category? If it is, great, let's go with it. Let's experiment with it uh, and expand on that and then, uh, and then see if we can implement it into my playing. Uh, we talked about the building blocks being air, lips, or a setup, uh, and our tongue. And uh, the, the, really the most important element out of all of these as a wind and brass player is, of course, our breathing and blowing. So while we're there, let's go. Breathing and blowing, just to remind ourselves from day one. So we have our fingers. Everyone can do this. Terrific. Breathe, feeling the most obvious feeling when you breathe in. For me, it's going to be the bottom of my ribs on my side. I want to feel that expanding. And then when we, when we release the air as simply and naturally as possible, nice and open through your chest. And we want to lock into that every morning because this is really the basis of what we're doing in terms of our, our mechanism, our fundamentals. And then we can take our straw. Or if you don't have a straw, you've got a mouthpiece. If you don't have a mouthpiece, that's all right. Take your, take your fingers again. But through the straw. So we've got a little bit more resistance, feeling that resistance, but making sure that we have the same feeling in our body. And then we can transfer that to the mouthpiece. Same feeling when we breathe in, same feeling when we blow. Really simple, and then into the instrument. <laughs> So that we're really teaching our brain to transfer this feeling when we're playing the when we're playing the horn or when we're playing the oboe or the flute, whichever it is, as simple, natural as possible. Really easy. So the the uh, the points that we're trying to focus on is it's really important in our practice that we experiment. We have a lot of opportunity to get a lot of really great information. Take that information, experiment with it, figure out whether it's actually useful for you or not. And if it is, great. Put it into your playing. If it's not, that's fine. Move on to something else. We want to create awareness. Create aw the awareness for me in, in performance is when, if I'm nervous, I obviously have some tension. I think we all felt that when we're nervous, we get a little tense. Okay, if I'm aware of that, I then can put the skills in place to get rid of that. So at the start of a concert, you'll see me on stage. I may have my fingers on my lips. <sighs> And I can be aware, oh, I'm feeling tense, I'm feeling nervous. Okay, great. I've got a tool to be able to fix that. <sighs> to set myself up so that, oh yeah, that's the feeling that I want. And then I can transfer that feeling into my playing. So that I can get out in front of any issues. Okay, so our assignment for today, or for yesterday actually, uh, is our sound production exercise. Who managed to get that done? Put in the chat how many, uh, how many practice sessions you managed to squeeze out doing our five exercises. So we're focusing on breathing and blowing and making sure that we're applying that to the exercises. So let's go through those exercises this morning. We just want to recap on that really quickly. Yeah, lots of people did it, which is great. Nice job, guys. Fantastic. Once I learn how to stop sharing. Okay, so the first one is uh, four by four. So we're gonna do four notes without articulation, just focusing on moving the air into the instrument, and then four notes with the articulation. Really, really simple. We're gonna start on, let's start this morning on a concert uh, E flat. Okay. 
step we'll just do a few of these just to get us going if you're having any trouble if it feels tense if it feels as though you're not really sure we know what to do just go straight back to your mouthpiece or straight back to your fingers this is your reset button if we're not sure of the feeling be aware of how that feels that's the simplest thing and then apply that to the instrument so don't be scared to go back we, we never fix anything on the horn or on the flute or on the clarinet we never fix it there. We fix it away from the instrument and then we bring it to the instrument and then we're in great shape. Okay, so let's uh, go down to a uh, concert D. <laughs> Same airstream, the air is starting the note, we're just coordinating with the with the tongue at the beginning of the sound. <laughs> of what I do in my practice on a daily basis. I want to set up this mechanism, make sure I've got the same feeling that I have when I'm blowing, applying that to the horn, and then we gradually expand that and increase the difficulty. And we're going to get to increasing the difficulty a little bit later when we add this into, uh, into etudes and studies. So the next exercise is our repeated note pattern. Another really simple one, the airstream is staying exactly the same all the way through each group, and the tongue is just cutting through that airstream. And we're going to talk a little bit more about my thoughts about a tongue position. There are a couple of questions that came up overnight uh, that I want to just uh, address and we'll chat about very quickly. Uh, but let's think about, actually we can do this one through the mouthpiece. So all that I want with my tongue position, we'll address this now, why not, is I want to think of my the bottom of my tongue, the tip of my tongue is at the bottom of my top teeth and it's touching all the way up the back of my middle front four teeth. And from that position, I'm just blowing my tongue down. And as you'll see, if I do it right, my bottom lip will just pop forward. And my corners are nice and stable. If my tongue is a little bit too far back, and it's a little pointy and a little tight, have a look what happens to my bottom lip. It's flat and tight, and I'm not gonna get any vibration out of it. Apologies for the graphic close-up. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, so sorry, Ripple, yeah. Well, there was a question, I, when you, let me know when you have a minute. There's a couple questions. Okay, so, so this is another thing that we talk about with experimentation and awareness. Experiment with your tongue position. This is how I reach this position for me. It gives me great clarity. And what the most important thing is, it interrupts the air as little as possible and allows the air to be the thing that is starting the notes. So this is, this is my tongue position. I have my, the tip of my tongue at the bottom of my top teeth, touching all the way up the back of my front teeth. And then it's just being blown down by the airstream. So we can try that through the mouthpiece. And so on. So I can feel that my air is really straight. 
Back of the tongue is, is nice and low and relaxed. As we go higher, the back of the tongue will arch, but we don't really need to worry about that. We're just focusing on the front of the tongue. A very, very small movement and keeping the tongue as nice and far forward as I can, allowing the air to do all the work. So starting on a, a concert uh, D flat. <laughs> So the idea is that we're always thinking of matching the airstream when we're away from the horn and putting that into the horn. Simple, natural, repeatable. And then the sound that we'll hear will be a little bit brighter, a little bit more edgy than we normally would maybe expect. But as we know, in a big orchestra or whenever you're playing in any environment where there's a reasonable acoustic, that sound will open up. The horn points in the wrong direction. Right? The audience, most of the audience is out the front and we point backwards. So if the sound is a little, it has a little bit more zip to it when it comes out of the bell, it's going to give us good projection and sound nice and open when we get into the hall. Uh, I gave a demonstration on the first day uh, about direct sound and how this works. So if you want to check that out on the, on the video from day one, uh, that will give you a good idea. Uh, so Ripple, question. Um, well, Trish, I had a question about blowing and do, when you're doing the flexibility exercises, is it just air speed that's changing the notes? So in flexibility, it's basically what we're trying to focus on is keep good stability in your, in your setup. The airstream needs to stay pretty stable. As we go into, as we go higher, we need to speed the air up. As we go lower, we need to open up the airstream. But it's the little muscles inside, inside the mouthpiece that are doing a bit of work for flexibility. So if I'm doing what I want to feel is that I'm the flexibility is oscillating around that airstream if that makes any sense so I want the air to be pretty straight in that case and and the little muscles are just allowing that to oscillate it's like a lip trill as we go through larger ranges I'm thinking about moving the air faster as I go higher and increasing the volume as I go lower so <laughs> So I'm allowing the air to do the work and my setup is, is as simple and, uh, and as quiet as possible. Great question. Thanks. Thanks, Trish. Yeah, one other question from Beth. Just um, why do we start on the B-flat horn for the repeated note pattern? Um, there's, you can start on the B-flat or the F horn uh, either way. I, I, for me, I start on the B-flat horn because it, uh, it provides a little less resistance and it just allows me to focus on moving my air. But there's no problem, obviously, with sound production, with quality of sound, the F horn is great for producing quality of sound. So again, it's one of these things of experiment with it, figure out what works for you. For me, for the B flat horn, I find that horn is, is quite open and, and I can focus on my airstream. I do a lot of work on the F horn as well, but it, to begin with, that's the simplest way for me to do it. But it doesn't mean that it's right. It just means that it's uh, it's what I do, and uh, and you should you should experiment with with a combination. Um, you know, you can do a lot of work on the F horn and then change to the B flat horn. You can mix it up, whichever sort of works for you. But the focus on for me is is at this moment in the in the uh, in the routine, right at the beginning. I'm not too concerned about how my 
chops feel or if I'm making the perfect sound. I know I'll make the perfect sound, I know I'll make a great sound once I get this mechanism set up. So I'm focusing on making sure I'm transferring the breathing and the blowing into the horn in the simplest, most relaxed way. And then the sound will take care of itself. And as my chops start to warm up, as my setup starts to get organized, that sound will become richer and, uh, and more stable. Okay, back to my screen sharing. So today we're talking about applying the skills. So we've developed a few of the skills. We've developed this idea of the air, lips, and tongue being the foundation of what we're doing. And we've got some exercises about how we can do this. So you can check out the rest of the exercises. We, we, we did uh, the exercise with the uh, slow scales. <laughs> scale where we where we're actually adding even more movement to what we're doing so all of the exercises we covered yesterday are going to give us a really good basis of being able to start expanding this basic skill set of air lips and tongue and now the idea is that we're going to be applying these to Etudes and studies. So what we're trying to do is we've, we've talked a lot about awareness and being aware of how you're feeling and making sure that the mechanism is simple, natural and repeatable. What we want to do is start putting stress on that awareness, start putting stress on the mechanism. And, and this is how we're going to expand this to be able to make it applicable to when we're playing pieces and, uh, and excerpts. So we're going to gradually increase the difficulty as we go and then understanding how to make sure that we're progressing in a sustainable way. That we're not going from playing to then the most difficult thing that we possibly can. That we're building a bridge to that and making sure that, yeah, we, we understand how we construct it. We've built some stress on the mechanism. It's, it's got stronger. And then when we play difficult pieces, it's done in a sustainable way. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is uh, building building awareness. And I like to start with some really simple simple studies where I can apply these. So we have in the chat, we have Conconi number, I can't read it because of my, so Conconi number four, really, really simple. Um, exercise study beautiful one Conconi is a vocal study so that it's already tapping us into this connection between the technical side and musical and everything we do has to be connected to the music so Conconi is a really really good one for that they're not particularly difficult technically but what we what we do have is that that we're able to build awareness of how we're playing these notes how we're playing this study while we're feeling the feelings that we want which is Focus on your breathing, focus on your blowing. Where is my corners and my tongue position? So the first thing we want to do is remove one of the elements in this. So we want to start all of the studies with blowing. So if we grab our mouthpiece or your straw, whatever you like, and we're just going to focus on singing the melody and blowing that melody through the back of the mouthpiece. So remember, out of our air, lips, and tongue, the only thing that can work on its own is the air. So we're establishing that from the beginning. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the tongue. And this one is pretty easy, but we can apply this to many different uh, studies. We're going to not articulate any of this. So we're going to start with a breath attack, and we can all try this. So breath attack, all that we're doing is focusing on moving that air and applying it to the melody that we're singing in our head. Just try that for yourself. The Conconi is in the chat. It's also in the IM community for those people on Facebook. Good morning, everyone on Facebook. Uh, 
in the Iron Community, in the file section of Iron Community, you'll be able to find this particular study. So I'll try it again. So I'm focusing on making sure I'm matching the feeling that I blew through my mouthpiece. So if we go a little bit further down this study, we get to the fifth line where we have these eighth notes. And this is where the replace comes in. So we're going to replace the blowing and the, or the, the sound production. So we're going to replace our lips with our tongue. So we're going to take the mouthpiece. So as we get to a slightly more technical thing, we want to get rid of the horn, get rid of the instrument, make sure that we're setting up the mechanism, and then we're going to apply that mechanism to the instrument. So. So we feel that connection, and then we restore all of the three elements. So that we can put, we can extract all of the issues, extract all the elements, isolate two at a time, or if in the case of the air, just one at a time. So we can isolate air and lips, and we can isolate air and tongue, and then we can put them all together as we get to the end. An even better etude to actually illustrate this is pretty much anything that you choose from Coprash. But if we start with Coprash number 10, and I got the wrong number, it's actually, we, we, we're looking at Coprash number 10, not Coprash number eight, but you know, 10 or eight, it's fine. So if we look at, if we look at the, uh, the Coprash that's, that's in the chat, Okay, so we have a lot of elements there. We have articulation, we have slurring, we have movement through the range. But it's not a particularly stressful um, etude. So this is where our, our uh, remove, replace, and uh, what are the words I'm looking for? Remove, replace, and restore. Very good, Andrew. <laughs> um, so we, if we start with uh, with removal, so I'm taking my tongue completely out of the equation. Just try that. So this is copress number ten, not copress number eight. Has everyone got it in the in the chats in the chat ripple? It is. Um, nice. Valerie's posted it. I know some people are having trouble. I think there's just probably a lot of activity in the chat. So if you just scroll up, okay, you should be able to find it. Um, Terrific. So we can we can apply this to pretty much any any uh, etude or study that you that you have. This is a really good way to get things started, particularly if the study is difficult. But in this case. We have a nice, easy register, not too difficult, C major. If we're playing it slurred. The other way we can approach it, of course, is to remove the lips, add the tongue. Very, very simple. Once we're happy with how that air is moving and that we've got that tongue cutting the airstream, then we can add it back in and restore all of those three elements. So that I'm building the 
thing from the from the base up we've got the elements set in place to begin with and then we're really clear that each of these steps are in place and then we put them all back together again. Are there any questions about that? Does that make sense? I don't see any questions about that specifically. I did put the link to the, in the Facebook group, there's a place where you can go straight to the files and all the music is there. So hopefully you guys can get access to that if you're, if you're not able to find it in the chat. Terrific. So then what happens when we get a study that actually we know pretty well? So most of us, just to show our hands, who's played cop race number 10 before? Yeah, good, okay, right. There's, so this is, so I, I chose well, I'm glad. Um, so we've all played this one. So how do, we, how do we get more out of it? Like, there's not a lot of, you know, if we, once we've played it and we've sort of played it through and we've learned all the notes, is it any use to us? Should we just move on to Vern Reynolds from this point? No, we shouldn't. So what's really important when we're talking about building the bridge, and this is why I really like Coprash, because it gives you so many choices. And what we want to focus on this morning is increasing the difficulty. Increasing the difficulty of our playing and expanding our skill set we can do this with exercises and studies that we know well. In our warm up, we use similar exercises most mornings, right? But then when we get to studies, suddenly we think, oh, if I want to play something difficult, I need to practice a really difficult study. Or if I want to increase my, my tonguing, I need to find a tonguing study. What we want to do is adapt the studies that we know and expand our skill set. So, how do we do that? Well, this is the technical part of the bridge. And Coprash actually gives us some help in the way that he actually writes his studies because he gives us some different articulations and sometimes some different rhythms. And this is really key for us to be aware of when we're practicing studies. They can be the simplest studies you like, but if we add difficulty to them, we're going to be able to expand our skill set and we're going to be able to improve. So we, what I like to do is to take studies that I know well and basically morph them into something different and place more difficulty on them. The element of me having to learn the notes is taken away so I can be more aware of what physical elements I'm putting in and how I'm expanding those elements and I'm doing it in a sustainable way. So with Coprash, the initial articulation pattern that we have <laughs> Okay, so that's very nice and I can play that. So what happens if I reverse that? It's slightly more difficult for my brain because I'm not familiar with it. I've played it the other way a thousand times. As soon as I do something slightly different, my brain's like, whoa, 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 hang on. This doesn't feel right. What are you doing? And it wants to fight it. This is when I'm starting to really make improvements. And if I can stay aware of how my airstream is moving, how my setup is, how my tongue is cutting, I'm gonna build strength in my mechanism and it's gonna be sustainable. So I can go through a whole variety of articulations. All of them are making me slightly uncomfortable because it's not what I'm used to practicing in this regular way. So the next thing that we want to focus on is rhythm. Changing the rhythm of, of, a, of the rhythmic pattern of an exercise is going to do the same thing for your brain. It makes it a little more challenging. So the, the basic rhythm so you can hear I make a mistake because my brain's a little confused about what's going on and it's fighting because it wants to get to a feeling of comfort. This level of discomfort, while not extreme, is helping me learn things better. And I can mix up the rhythms with that and create more difficulty. So you 
can be creative with the different rhythms. And Copress is really a really nice one because it gives you basically eighth notes all the way through. So you can you can just transfer a different pattern to them. You have to get a little bit more creative as, as you go to more difficult studies because there are obviously different rhythms that are built into that. But any time that you can change one of the components, you, you're creating difficulty for yourself and you're going to learn things better. Obviously, another one for this is tempo. Right, so if we, if we think about increasing the tempo or even decreasing the tempo each time, it's going to change different elements and it's going to change our focus. And if we can stay aware of making sure that our tongue is doing the same thing when we're going faster or when we're going slower, that our air is traveling the same, depending on you know, whether it's slow or whether it's fast, that our setup is staying nice and stable, we're going, to, we're going to really embed these things really well. So we don't have to go crazy and practice really difficult studies. We can make the studies that we know more difficult and expand in a, in a very sustainable way our development. So another thing for us to think about in terms of building this bridge and building this stability of just the same study material is to change the range. We can take down an octave or we can transpose. So not only are we making it really more difficult for your brain to be able to play the notes on the page, but you're actually working on your transposition at the same time. And when we're working on transposition as, as brass players, it's really handy to work on transposition with something that we actually know orally rather than picking a new piece and then having to try and navigate our way around the different transpositions that way. Dynamics is obviously another one that we can, we can mix in. We're used to playing this with the crescendo. Right, so what we can do is reverse this. So that we're mixing up things, making it more challenging as we go. And then the last one that I like to muck around with is style. In Mozart, we have a lot of this two slurred, two tongued feeling. So we can we can think I'm playing a Mozart concerto. Or if I want to play something more in the style of, uh, let's say, Bruckner. It helps us to create our imagination that we're going to apply later on to our excerpts and pieces. So that we're building these blocks and expanding our difficulty and applying them to musical outcomes. If I were to apply this one to the Conconi exercise or Conconi study, let's have a look. So this is this is a good one. We can we can use the Conconi one if we're working on our articulation, for example. I can add in extra notes. <laughs> So I'm still got I'm still making sure I put in place the same architecture, the same phrasing, same musicality, but I'm just adding my articulation. It's a really easy one for me to make sure that I'm articulating how I would want it to happen if I was under more pressure. And then or if we wanted to speed it up, just because it's got a slur written underneath there and Conconi has made this a vocal study, I can change this into, into a uh, staccato study if I want. Yeah, so, so that I'm using the material to my advantage and I'm taking control of what I want to say with this. So if I want, wanted this to be, for example, practicing the, um, let's say the, 
the imagine the first the beginning of minor one. and apply the notes of the study to fit that character. Does that make sense to everyone? So what I would encourage you to do is, is so who, who, who brought their favorite uh, etude or study with them today? Anyone? Yes, terrific. Okay, put it in the chat what you've, what you've brought. I'm intrigued. Russ, exactly. That's great. Jazzy. We, the, we can muck around with the styles. We can swing it. We can do a whole bunch of different things uh, to, make, to make the thing more challenging. To make It's just a bunch of notes. And just remember that, and I remember this, we did, I did a Brooklyn Symphony many, many years ago in, in Queensland. We had a conductor called Muhai Tang. And he gave us this speech before the concert. And he held up the score and he says, this is Bruckner 8. He said, it's not Bruckner 8, it's just black notes on a white page. Bruckner 8 is the music that you put out. And it's the same with studies. The study, we can have the most simple study, most simple copra study, but we can make it beautiful and musical and we can expand it in a way that's going to really help our development. So if we, if we are not limited by what is written on the page and we use our imagination, we're going to get a lot more out of our study development. Okay, a lot of cool studies here. Potag, a lot of really good ones. Yeah. So for me, these first two studies that we've talked about today, the, the Conconi and the uh, and the Colprash, studies that most of us find pretty simple, most of us can can play pretty comfortably. These are the great ones to exp expand our new skill set. When we're going through an embouchure change, when we're changing our tongue position, when we're trying to focus on a particular area of our playing, stick with simple things and gradually expand the difficulty of those things rather than try and feel as though you need to apply it to Strauss two straight away. Okay. Uh, the question, a good question about uh, breathing and blowing in terms of beginners. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the um, about their intonation. If if we're breathing and blowing well and our setup is relaxed, the notes are going to fall into the middle of the the pitches pretty stably, and we're going to get some good good stability with the uh, with the quality of the sound. What we want to be doing is playing in the center of the sound. In terms of intonation, what I would definitely do is is make sure that people are singing. One of the greatest uh, you know, drills that you can do is if you've got a piano, just play the piece along to the piano and then sing it and just check that you're singing in tune. If you can hear it in tune, it's going to go into the horn or into the instrument pretty well in tune. And that will develop over time. Okay. So. Now we move to progressing things in a sustainable way. So... For me, you know, there are there are studies that obviously like what we talked about with Koprash and Conconi that are quite simple that we can expand. Then we get to studies that are actually really expanding our that are, that are on their own going to push our limits. And we need to understand how to bring them back to a realm where actually we're capable of doing them and capable of expanding our progress in a sustainable way. There's no point in playing through exercises and excerpts if they're too difficult and we're playing them too fast, too high, too loud. It's not, going to, it's not going to help our improvement. What we're going to do is embed poor habits and we're not going to be able to be aware of how we're breathing, how we're blowing, how is our setup and what is our tongue position. So I really like the Galle book 
the Galley 12 studies. And we've put in the chat uh, and in the IM community number four. And this is a really good one because it combines a lot of elements. And this is where we're starting to move towards getting the technique to connect with our musical side, connect with the musical um, approach that we want to have when we have uh, when we're playing excerpts and pieces. So the galley number four. <laughs> And it's going to push the most out of these studies. Well, we do the same thing that we do the same thing that we did with the simple studies. We go back to our elements of remove, replace, and restore. So for this one, I would start with the mouthpiece. Being really conscious of feeling my airstream and making sure my tongue is cutting through the air. And then what I would really make sure I did is when I applied, when I replaced, so I'm gonna replace my tongue with my lips, is that I took it at a tempo where I can still be aware of what the elements I'm putting in. simple as possible and then from there once I'm confident with that I can start while still staying without articulation I can start increasing the speed <laughs> Also at this point, because I've got these skills of being able to change the articulation, which we're going to touch on in a second, but I can change the rhythm, I can change the speed, which we're doing, we can add these different things in. changing one element even though I'm doing it in a really simple way it's confusing for my brain and so I make a mistake and then I know okay great I'm learning this even more stably and once I'm happy that I've got I'm feeling confident with the fingerings and I'm feeling confident of the melody that I'm making then I can add all of the things back together again <laughs> So I might need to mix up the order. I might need to go back to the mouthpiece to make sure that my tongue position is set up and my breathing is set up. But I want to take the time to do this, particularly as the, as the studies and etudes I, um, I'm working on become more difficult. Any questions, put them in the chat. Does that all make sense to everyone? So what we want to be focusing on, in, in even in the simple exercises, and particularly these ones, is once we've got the technical elements down in the difficult studies, and this this uh, this Galay one is is quite challenging. We want to really focus on making sure we're aware of the phrasing, aware of the musicality, and aware of the style that we want to put in place. So again, this one has got a lot of a lot of different things built in. So I don't need to think so much about you know, creating variety of articulation because it's already built into it. But what I want to do is I want to think about the variety of the character that I want. So I can play this in a Strauss way, Richard Strauss way. <laughs> it's not in three, four, so it'd be difficult to do the other stuff. Um, <laughs> So 
So this is my Strauss character that's going to match with Till Orlenspiegel maybe, Held and Laban, these sorts of things. And I can also play it in a Mozart character. <laughs> so that I've got a lighter character so that we can think of applying the studies even though it's the same study I can apply it to different works that I'm using to help me get into the character when I get into the music that's actually in that character it's going to be a lot easier if that makes sense okay and the last so just recapping, you know, progressing sustainably, making sure that our technique is, is matching and marrying our musicality. If we don't have the technique, it's impossible to be musical. But once we've got the technique, once we've applied it, expanded it, and now it's in these difficult studies and we can get around it, then we've really got to focus on the musicality. Oh, too soon. So with Alphonse... Book five, number six, is one specifically tied towards the musicality. It's specifically tied towards Beethoven's Sixth Symphony. So if we look at that, this is where it's really great to be able to find studies that actually really align with the stuff that you're going to play in the orchestra. So, or in solo pieces. So... Obviously, we want to tie the character to the to the scherzo in uh, in Beethoven six, and then later on, it's in the last movement. But it's also because even if we take this take take the musical element out of it, it provides us with with a pretty simple etude that we can add different rhythms, different articulation. <laughs> creating more difficulty and then when we bring it back to the original form we're in pretty good shape so your assignment for the day so find a simple study and it can be your favorite study it's no problem so go through it blowing it first and obviously you're not going to blow the whole study because you'll pass out please don't pass out or practice lying on the bed one of the two and then we're going to play it with articulation, without articulation. So take the articulation out, and then you're going to play it as written. So if you want to take the examples that we put today, that's perfect. I would probably start this one with the, the Coprash. Coprash 10 is a great one to do it with. So blow through that, play it without articulation, and then add the articulation back in. And five two-minute sessions. Remember, in our practice, what is really helpful is spacing out your practice and multiple touch points per day. If you're learning a new piece, if you're learning a new study, if you're trying to develop a new skill, doing that five, 10 times a day for little chunks of time is gonna be far more beneficial than you sitting down for a half an hour or an hour and practicing that thing and then never touching it for the rest of the day. So five two minute sessions, I don't think there's anyone that doesn't have 10 minutes that you can't do this over the course of a day. Two minute sessions. The other thing with two minute sessions, or even or five minute sessions, and this is something that, that I, we talk about a lot in the in the master course, is is understanding our practice structure and and putting together the best possible way to practice. And we talk about five minute chunks of practice. If you're doing five two minute sessions, as opposed to one 10 minute session, you have five opportunities to play the first note of the session. And when we're talking about concerts and auditions, what's the most difficult thing that we have when we're doing an audition with an excerpt? Getting the first note, right? Most people in an audition will split the first note. Well, the most notes that get split are the first note, right? In an audition. If you're giving yourself in your practice five opportunities to play that first note rather than one, 
you're getting more familiar with that opportunity to really focus and produce that result at the start of the excerpt. So it also gives us, uh, we can focus much more for two minutes than we can for 10 minutes. So if you're practicing for, 10, for this for just one 10 minute block, your concentration might wane a little bit. You might think about, you know, I've got to check my email, I've got to check my Facebook, I've got to check into an invested musician website, these things, because that's what everyone wants to do all the time is check into investment musician website. That's a very important thing. Or you might want to check out, you know, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I need to check out the investment musician YouTube channel. If if we're just focusing on two minutes, you're going to be able to stay focused on that and work really hard. It's exactly the same as interval training. If I told you that you had to do sit-ups one minute, you're like, oh, we can do that. You can do 10 one-minute sessions throughout the day of sit-ups. I think we're pretty good with that. If I said you had to do sit-ups for 10 minutes in a block, the first thing you do is start slowly, and then you probably take a rest in, in the middle. And it's the same with practice. The more intense practice sessions we can have, the more progress we're gonna make. And then choose your favorite etude. Practice increasing the difficulty by altering the articulation, rhythm, and tempo. And if you wanna take it to like the pro level, change the dynamics, the range, and the style. And because this is a, this is a more substantial etude, five three-minute sessions. But whatever works for you. If you wanna do five one-minute sessions, that's totally fine. But what you'll discover is if you break your practice up into these small chunks, you're gonna make more progress, you're gonna to get to your goals much quicker. At the end of this session uh, on the YouTube channel for Investor Musician, uh, Elizabeth, who is, uh, is our brilliant uh, video person and Investor Musician, has, has, uh, will be uploading operation number four. And a lot of the elements we talked about today will be covered in that. Uh, it'll give you another idea on another on another coprash uh, attitude of like how to break it down, how I break it down, how to expand it, how to make it more difficult for yourself, how to get the most out of it. So uh, that'll be on the Investor Musician YouTube channel, so please check that out. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do, so that you don't miss any of the good stuff. We're putting up uh, multiple posts each week. All of the warm-up sessions will go onto the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to be doing some excerpt uh, breakdown stuff in the coming months and of course uh, working on etudes and our, and our fundamental technique things. Okay, so tomorrow we're connecting the bridge. So we've worked on from day one, we've worked on starting with this foundation, building the base, understanding the building blocks, expanding the building blocks into exercises and starting to put them into our, into our routine. Now applying them to notes on a page, not just ran, just not not just automatically putting them into exercises, but we're now starting to add them to different notes and starting to expand them that way. Now we're going to work out how we apply that and break down excerpts and pieces. So tomorrow would be great if you bring your favourite two excerpts. So one lyrical one and one technical one. And what we're gonna do, obviously we're not gonna go through 150 excerpts, but what we're gonna do is we're hopefully gonna explain in a way where you can look at your excerpts in a different way. Rather than, oh my goodness, Till Spiegel is just a nightmare. We're gonna be able to break that apart and say, okay, it's only articulation. It's only an ascending crescendo. It's only a crescendo down into the pedal register. How do I get around these different ranges? How do I add the technical elements to be able to make this happen? And then how do I practice this so that I can make this connection? And this is the big thing we're talking about tomorrow is making the connection between the technical and the musical. So yes, we need to work on the technical. We need to break down the technical and then we need to bring these two things together so that we can really present great excerpts and great pieces when we need to. Okay, are there any questions, Rupo, in the chat? Uh, a couple. One is how often do you practice the etudes? How often do, 
Do, do you I? practice the etudes? If you're well, there's a follow up. If you're having a heavy week of playing, do you just do your warm up, or do you do the re exercises regularly and make sure everything's working properly? Great question. So, so I, in terms of practice planning and uh, and organization, I want to sit down at the beginning of every week and have a look at my week and see. Okay, I'm, this week I'm playing Marla Five. Okay, I'm not going to be doing uh, the entire Vern Reynolds book this week, is what I would be saying to myself. Uh, or I'm not going to be practicing the uh, you know the all of the Galilee studies this week. So I would be matching my uh, practice with what I've got in terms of workload. So if I'm playing a Mahler symphony, I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, low register warm up stuff and making sure because in Mahler, because it's a lot to play and it's a bit nervy, the potential for me to build intention in my playing is pretty high. Right? And also because I'm playing loud, the, te the, the possibility for me to sort of feel a bit stiff is pretty high. So I want to have the opposite of that. I want to spend a lot of time doing a lot of simple, soft things and really focusing on establishing the elements that I want to put in place when I'm under pressure. So I'm focusing on breathing, focusing on blowing, making sure that my tongue is doing the right things. Because when I know when I get into the mala, I can't be aware of that. I'm focusing on the music. I'm focusing on presenting a great product. I want to make sure that those things are in place before I get onto the stage. In terms of studies, that's the week where I would be practicing a lot of simple studies. Conconi is a really good one. Shoemaker is a really good one. If I've got a lighter week where I've, all I've got is a Mozart symphony, fantastic. That's where I can really get stuck into my Galilee studies. I can start doing more difficult things. I can start extending my range. I'm going to work on the things that are going to extend my skill set and start pushing myself. Because I know that at work, I'm, all I'm doing is a lot of light stuff. So I need to build up my strength that way. So basically looking at doing things the opposite of what I'm playing at work. If I've got nothing on, like, you know, say the last 12 months, um, then, then, I can, then I can really experiment. And I want to get in those weeks where I've got a really low week. If there's something in my playing that I recognize, that oh yeah, I need to really, you know, start doing some more work on my low register. That's when I can double down on that and really start extending the difficulty of things in a register where I'm not comfortable or in a skill set that I need to improve. And my practice is set up in such a way that it's always an experimentation. I'm always creating awareness. And I want to, I want to make sure that I'm, that I'm allowing myself to make mistakes. Mistakes are a great opportunity for me to learn something. So if I screw something up in practice, I'm really happy because I'm, it's teaching me something. It's like, okay, so I, uh, something went wrong. All right, what was it? How did I breathe? Oh, not sure. Okay, right, well, that's good. That reminds me, yeah, I need to make sure I breathe. How, did I, how was I blowing? Oh, I'm not really sure. Okay, right, well, I need to address that. How was my tongue position? Well, I'm not really sure. Okay, so this is, this is what happens in practice. I would much rather screw up a lot in practice than in front of 15,000 people at the Hollywood Bowl. I don't know about you, but but it's just an important thing is that we think about when we practice, the only person that's hearing us is us. So if we make a mistake, it's totally fine. You've heard yourself make a lot of mistakes. Take it as an opportunity to learn. Go through the process of, you know, what were the elements that weren't in place? Put them in place. Expand them and keep going. So continue with that awareness and experimentation. Okay. Fantastic, everybody. Great job. It's terrific to see you guys. Two, does everyone feel as though their playing is improving? Things are easier? Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Can I take one quick picture? Can everyone hold up your horn here? Got it handy. Still want to see your faces. Don't hide face. All right. Okay, hang on. One, two, three. Great. Thank you, guys. All right, terrific. So please, um, please put your uh, videos if you if you're practicing something. If you're having uh, if if you've made a breakthrough in your playing in the last week. If there's something that you know you feel as though you know other people would would be interested in seeing please put that up in the iron community we love seeing that um and put your studies up there too if they're if they're going well and we look okay. forward sorry ripple 
Oh, no, I was just going to say there's just two days left. So you guys are doing great. Hang in there and it, it only gets better from here. So. Yeah, so so the idea, I mean, the idea of what we're doing is by the end of by the end of Saturday, we've got a whole bunch of building blocks. We've got we're layering stuff on top of each other. You've got going to have a skill set that you're going to be able to identify when things don't work, and you can be able to fix it, and you can be able to expand your skill set. And and as long as we keep doing that in a sustainable way, we're going to get where we want to go. So thank you so much. This is a great amount of fun, and have a great day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Thank you.